For all the best tips and strategies, check out the Ultimate Utility app. Links are available in the description. So today's update for Infinite Warfare included three new weapons and a few minor improvements. First up, season pass holders can get their hands on a brand new weapon, the RVN Assault Rifle. This is a two round burst auto fire energy rifle, which can also be split into melee mode for faster movement and one hit kills. You can crack this thing in half and charge it into your enemies. It works sort of like a very lethal defibrillator, meaning you can shock the shit out of your opponents. Now if you already have the Season Pass, you'll find the base version of the RVN available in Create a Class right now. Additionally, non-Season Pass holders can earn the base version of the RVN by completing a challenge. The challenge is to get 200 kills with an energy-based assault rifle that's also equipped with an accessory you've earned through Weapon Prestige. That means before you can even attempt the challenge, you'll need to prestige whatever energy weapon you plan on using to get these 200 kills. Now the variants of the RVN will also be available to all players but in supply drops. And if you happen to get one of those, you'll also unlock the base version. So the first thing I wanted to point out is that this weapon is considered an auto fire burst weapon. That means you can hold down the trigger and it'll burst for you. You don't have to continually tap it. Now I don't have the actual weapon stats yet, but based on some hand testing, the assault rifle mode on this weapon is pretty bad. It may actually have the worst time to kill out of all the assault rifles in the game. I can't put my finger on it, but something just seems a bit off with the hit detection. The redeeming factor for the RVN is the melee mode. Not only is it incredibly fun, it's actually quite effective. The lunge for this mode seems to be in your favor, and obviously it's a one hit kill. So if you like running a melee weapon, this weapon is definitely going to be one of your favorites. Why run a combat knife when you can have the additional benefit of the assault rifle mode to hit long range targets in addition to the one hit kill melee machine? I was lucky enough to get the rare variant, which is called the Brain Case Bruiser. The second weapon perk on this is Lights Out, which increases the melee speed. Running this weapon in melee only mode is probably the most fun I've ever had in Infinite Warfare. And if you couple it with Warfighter's Overdrive, it's even more enjoyable. So overall, it's a below average assault rifle, but it's also a more than capable melee machine. If you couple the two together, you've got a perfectly balanced war machine. The next weapon is a pistol, the UDM. This is a full auto ballistic pistol. It's got a slow fire rate, but high damage that makes it effective at longer ranges. And this is actually how I prefer my pistols. Full auto, high damage, and slow fire rate. That's a perfect triforce for a deadly weapon. Now just like the RVN, there's two ways to get this. First, if you happen to get any of the variants out of a supply drop, you'll instantly be rewarded the base weapon and can then use it immediately. If you're not that lucky, there's also a challenge available. You have to kill 200 enemies with pistols, with an optic sight equipped, and an accessory earned through the weapon prestige. So again, in order to complete this challenge, you first have to prestige a pistol to get a weapon accessory. Now unlike the RVN Assault Rifle, this UDM pistol is not rewarded to Season Pass owners. So this pistol, believe it or not, is absolutely amazing. Don't just take my word for it though. I highly suggest trying it out yourself. I was routinely getting around 40 kills a match utilizing this as my primary. Unfortunately, there's no foregrip attachment for this weapon, but the slower fire rate makes it relatively easy to control. Of course, since it is a pistol, it only has 14 bullets. However, with extended mags, this goes up to 21. I haven't tested the stats yet, but I was getting a lot of three shot kills. It's incredibly powerful, that's for certain. The iron sights remind me of the Razorback from Black Ops 3. As a true secondary, this can pack a serious punch. However, given its brute strength, it can also serve you well as a primary. Now, if you happen to get the epic variant out of a supply drop, it turns it into a semi-auto sniper rifle. Now the iron sights on this weapon turned a wank on the cob, but it still remains as powerful as ever. It's only a one-shot kill in tactical team deathmatch, which is what this gameplay is. Otherwise, it's a two-hit body and one-hit headshot in regular modes. And by the way, this gameplay was given to me by one of my subscribers. They call me Gerben. If you want to see the gameplay in its entirety, I linked his video in the description. Nothing will induce rage faster than whipping out a sniper pistol and then proceeding to one-shot someone across the full length of the map. 
So overall, I'd rate this pistol as incredible. Five out of five dancing bananas on the peanut butter tabor time scale. Whether you use it as a primary, a secondary, or even a damn sniper rifle, it should suit you well. I'll be sure to cover the UDM pistol as well as the RVN assault rifle in more detail in future videos, including their actual stats. So what else got updated? They added the ability to rotate your rig a full 360 degrees now. You can do this almost at all times, including in the pregame lobbies. This makes seeing your hard earned outfits a bit easier. To further customize your rig, they also included the option to equip 4 taunts instead of just one. This is a subtle update, but one that is pretty useful. Now one of my favorite parts of the update is a change to the winner's circle. Instead of seeing your rig's payload weapon, which is how it used to be, they've now made it so the last weapon your character uses in a match is the one that's featured. And this is a great way to show off your camos. When it comes to the Quartermaster, I'm sure most of you are aware by now that they moved some of the supply drop only weapons into the prototype lab. The weapons that were moved include the Reaver Machete, the Volk Corruption, the ERAD Destiny, the DMR Binary, and the DCM-8 Evenkeel. It should be noted that some weapons have not yet been moved, such as the K-Bar String Theory or the Epic RPR. Since those weapons were moved out, a handful of new weapon prototypes were put in, including a brand new melee weapon, and this is the Axe. The best part about this weapon is that it has the Hurl ability, which allows you to throw it and pick it back up. Now lastly, they added a new feature called Simultaneous Kills. This allows players to kill one another with ballistic and energy weapons at the same time. For example, if two players with low health fire at the exact same time, both players will die. The same would apply if two snipers headshot each other at the same time. When this occurs, you'll not only see it happen in the kill feed, but you'll also get a medal called Trade. This is called a Kill Trade in the Options menu and it'll be defaulted to off in custom matches. I need to note that this is only in custom matches. It's not live in public matches. I've yet to test this out personally, but I may do a video covering it. I doubt it'll ever be featured in public matches though. I think that's about all this update had to offer. Overall, the three weapons they added are pretty good. They all have their strengths and weaknesses, but they're unique enough to make the game still feel fresh. If you haven't jumped on Infinite Warfare in a while, I highly suggest giving these new weapons a whirl.